Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I was just pondering Nidarians. Why don't you come have a look? Cnidaria contains a diverse group of animals, including some of the most colorful species in the world. Cnidaria began showing up in the fossil record about 580 million years ago. Despite some of their appearances, we must remember that they are animals, and as such, survive heterotrophically, or by eating. This anemone is enjoying a crab dinner. Phylum Cnidaria contains the myriad species of coral that live in the ocean. Because many species of coral are so rigid and seemingly immobile, for many years coral were considered to be made from stone, or to be plants. However, in the 1800s, coral finally came to be seen for what it is, comprised of very small, heterotrophic animals. These animals live and function as a group, called a head and this head is considered to be a single organism made of millions of smaller organisms. Coral grows over time by growing on top of its own waste material, calcium carbonate, and it is this that gives coral its rigid structure. Phylum Cnidaria also includes the immobile sea anemone. Anemones attach to coral or the ocean floor by means of a fleshy, sticky, primitive foot known as a basal disc. The basal disc is connected to a stalk that contains the anemone's simple digestive system. At the top of the stalk is the mouth of the anemone surrounded by its numerous, often colorful, tentacles. These tentacles, though often beautiful, contain the anemone's best weapon and main form of defense, tiny, stinging organelles called nidocytes. They work like this. When something, say, a fish, passes over a special trigger on the nidocyte, called a nidocyl, the nidocyte fires a specialized hook called a nematocyst. The nematocyst pierces the skin of the fish and injects a neurotoxin capable of paralyzing fish and injuring humans, sometimes fatally. In this way, the anemone can be a very viable hunter, despite its immobile sessile body. In spite of its efficient hunting, there are some fish, most notably clownfish, that are able to live amongst the toxic anemone without being injured by its nematocysts. These fish gain protection from larger fish that might eat them, and at the same time help the anemone by eating whatever algae may start to grow on the anemone's body.
close relative of the sea anemone is an animal that we commonly call the jellyfish. There are more than 1,500 species of jellyfish that come in all shapes, colors, and sizes. They live in shallow waters, and waters that are so deep the pressure would easily kill a human being. Recently, jellyfish have been plaguing coastal waters in many areas around the world. Near Japan, giant jellyfish, like these, have begun to wreak havoc on the Pacific Ocean ecosystems and are decimating fish populations. Near Australia, a different species of jellyfish, known as the box jellyfish, have been causing much more severe problems because of their effect on humans. Box jellyfish's nematocysts are extremely toxic to human beings and cause excruciating pain. These are not a welcome addition to a tourist trip to the beach. In fact, all jellyfish are poisonous to some degree. However, the ability of their nematocysts to pierce human flesh varies, making some jellyfish much more safe than others. In fact, certain species of jellyfish are eaten as food in Asian cultures. Another jellyfish, named Teratopsis nutricula, has recently been seen to regenerate itself after aging. As its cells age, they begin to transform into a younger state in their development. So, as this jellyfish ages, it actually becomes younger on a cellular level. Because of this, the Teratopsis nutricula has become known as the immortal jellyfish. Finally, the most famous jellyfish of all, the Portuguese man of war, or blue bottle, is not a jellyfish at all, but rather a collection of four different types of highly specialized cnidarians. Nevertheless, when swimming in the ocean, JELLYFISH is much easier to say and understand than the alternative. Four unique species of medusoids and polyps that live as a colony! Jellyfish are a unique type of cnidarian that float on ocean currents or in waves, making these mobile anemones efficient hunters in the ocean.